Ezekiel 34. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and tell them, even the shepherds. The Lord Yahweh says, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Shouldn't the shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourself with the wool, you kill the fatlings, but you don't feed the sheep. You haven't strengthened the diseased. You haven't healed that which was sick. You haven't bound up that which was broken. You haven't brought back that which was driven away. You haven't sought that which was lost, but you have ruled over them with force and with rigor. They were scattered because there was no shepherd. They became food to all the animals of the field and were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill. Yes, my sheep were scattered on all the surface of the earth. There was no one who searched or sought. Therefore, you shepherds, hear Yahweh's word. As I live, says the Lord Yahweh, surely because my sheep became a prey and my sheep became food to all the animals of the field, because there was no shepherd and my shepherds didn't search for my sheep, but my shepherds fed themselves and didn't feed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear Yahweh's word. The Lord Yahweh says, behold, I am against the shepherds. I will require my sheep at their hands and cause them to cease from feeding the sheep. The shepherds won't feed themselves anymore. I will deliver my sheep from their mouth that they may not be food for them. For the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I myself, even I, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered abroad, so I will seek out my sheep. I will deliver them out of the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and their fold will be on the mountains of the height of Israel. There they will lie down in a good fold. They will feed on fat pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will cause them to lie down, says the Lord Yahweh. I will seek that which was lost, and will bring back that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them in justice. As for you, O my flock, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, the rams and the male goats. Does it seem a small thing to you to have fed on the good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pasture? And to have drunk of the clear waters, but must you foul the residue with your feet? As for my sheep, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet." Therefore the Lord Yahweh says to them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you thrust with side and with shoulder, and push all the diseased with your horns, until you have scattered them abroad. Therefore I will save my flock, and they will no more be a prey. I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up one shepherd over them, and he will feed them, even my servant David. He will feed them, and he will be their shepherd. I, Yahweh, will be their God, and my servant David, prince among them. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. I will make them a covenant of peace, and will cause evil animals to cease out of the land. They will dwell securely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I will make them and the places around my hill a blessing. I will cause the shower to come down in its season. There will be showers of blessing. The tree of the field will yield its fruit, and the earth will yield its increase, and they will be secure in their land. Then they will know that I am Yahweh, when I have broken the bars of their yoke, and have delivered them out of the hand of those who made slaves of them. They will no more be a prey to the nations, neither will the animals of the earth devour them, but they will dwell securely, and no one will make them afraid. I will raise up to them a plantation for renown, and they will no more be consumed, consumed with famine in the land, and not bear the shame of the nations any more. They will know that I, Yahweh, their God, am with them, and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord Yahweh. You, my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, says the Lord Yahweh. All right. There's a lot in this chapter. The first bit, God gets cranky with the shepherds because they don't do a good, jo a good job of shepherding. Now, shepherds are like the leaders, the kings, the princes, the priests. These are the people kind of in charge of the country. 
and it's not just the ones in charge at the time of Ezekiel because at the time that Ezekiel prophesies this Jerusalem has fallen and been destroyed and people are in exile so it's not just like King Zedekiah and he's not even the king anymore this is like a kind of a to anyone who's got a leadership authority or position they had taken advantage of their position to basically uh, feather their own nest or you know like you know sometimes people they kind of like get given a good job in a public position with influence and they use it to kind of like advance and self-promote themselves rather than using it to serve which is what they're supposed to do and so <laughs> um you know i remember when i was a kid you know there was a president in the philippines uh president marcos and he was in the news because he had been overthrown and uh, he was using his position to kind of like fill up his bank account with money and when they went into his palace his wife imelda marcos had like a thousand pairs of shoes and um <laughs> i just remember that as a kid you know wow a thousand pairs of shoes you could wear like a different pair every day for like three straight years and still not wear the same pair of shoes you know, do you really need that many shoes and um so there was someone who was supposed to be you know prime minister that literally means the first servant prime means first minister is someone who's like serving people so the prime minister or the president of um the philippines was supposed to be like serving the people but was like using his position to benefit himself well the lord was speaking to these shepherds of israel and he was cranky with them because that's what they were doing and um the word shepherd it's it's we have a word for it in our language the modern word is pastor so in churches today the shepherds are the pastors in the new testament jesus is talking with uh, peter john and james and jesus says to peter three times this is john chapter 21 he says do you love me peter peter says yes lord i love you each time he says feed my sheep in other words be a shepherd be a pastor be someone that looks after my sheep and who are the sheep god's people and so in the new testament with the, the picture of or even in the old testament god's people are the sheep the leaders are the shepherds and so god gets cranky when the shepherds don't look after the sheep they just look after themselves now you might say oh well, i'm not a shepherd oh yes you are everyone is a shepherd of something now maybe if you're a little baby you're not but you might be like me you might be a pastor but you might be at work you might be a boss you're a shepherd you might be a mum or a dad you're a shepherd you've got children in that family or you might run a little life group or a bible study you're a shepherd every person at some point in their life has influence and if you're a christian you need to be mindful of looking after the people that are in your life around you you're a shepherd to someone and so the lord gets cranky when we don't do that properly the second half of the chapter or you know the next section of the chapter g god said he was going to judge between sheep and sheep so it's like sometimes in a flock you've got a big sheep <laughs> and because he's bigger he becomes a bully and doesn't let the other sheep you know he he wants to eat his food first he gets in has his drink first doesn't let the other sheep get in by the time they get there there's not much left he's a bully and the lord says i'm judging between sheep and sheep so sometimes even among believers there are bullies there are people that try to push themselves ahead ahead of others others miss out they they're so concerned that they get what they think they want or need that others miss out god doesn't like that either um, we what did jesus say he who wants to be first in the kingdom of heaven should be servant of all <laughs> so new testament lessons but they're here right here in the old testament first you know let the others go first and then finally we get to the best part of the chapter where we get down to where are we verse 22 god says therefore so basically it's because the the sheep have had no shepherd because there's been bullies among the sheep because god's people haven't been well looked after he says therefore i will save my flock in other words these shepherds are doing a lousy job i've got to do it no more are they going to be prey i'm going to set up one shepherd over all of them he's going to feed them it's going to be david so there's going to be one shepherd 
David. Verse 24, and it, God says, I will be their God, and my servant David will be their prince. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. Then verse 25, I'll make them a covenant of peace, and will cause evil animals to cease out of the land. They will dwell in will. They will dwell securely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. This one shepherd is Jesus. Jesus is the descendant of David. Whenever it says something like, I'm going to raise up David, it's Jesus. Jesus is the one shepherd that was going to shepherd his people. You go to the New Testament, it's in John chapter... Ooh, what chapter was it? Was it John chapter 10? I think, I hope I've written this down. I think I accidentally left that out of my notes. Oh, I apologise. I think it's John chapter 10. Um, it is. It's John chapter 10, verse 11 to 18. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And he says, I feed my sheep. He says, and, my, and I speak to my sheep, and my sheep hear my voice. And um, so Jesus is this prince. He's the prince of Israel. He's the leader of Israel. And we are his sheep. Now you might say, well, hang on. I thought the sheep was Israel. Well, the sheep does include Israel. In fact, if you go to Matthew, verse 15, verse 24, there's a story there there's a, where Jesus says he was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Who are the lost sheep? It's all the tribes of Israel. So you've got all these Israelite, people from Israel, people from the 12 tribes, and through this process of, of all the invasions of Assyrians and Babylonians, they're scattered all over the world, but some of them are returned, and they're in the, the land of Israel, but they're lost sheep. Jesus, when he comes, he's the shepherd, and he's been sent to the lost sheep. And do you notice that Jesus, for most of his teaching career, is not in Jerusalem? He's there a couple of times. Uh, he goes up every year for festivals and feasts, like Passover. But... The rest of the time, he's wandering through like Galilee and Samaria and, you know, Capernaum, like in these other regions, which, which guess what? That's where the lost sheep are. <laughs> these are the ones that don't know about God. The lost sheep. So the Lord is the shepherd. He's come to restore his people. He specifically goes to the lost sheep. But he says in John chapter 10, that not only is he the good shepherd, he says, I have other sheep that are not of this pen. I'm going to bring them to, and there's going to be one sheep pen and one shepherd. Who are these other sheep? It's the Gentiles. So there's the lost sheep of Israel, but there are other sheep. The Lord was going to bring them in, and he was going to make one sheep pen, in other words, one church, one Israel, one body of Christ, one olive tree, one, one sheep pen. Like it, it's one thing. And there was going to be one shepherd, Jesus. Some people think Jesus is going to come again one day and he's going to you know, be a king that sits in Jerusalem on an actual throne and be like the actual king of Israel again. And no, he's not. He's the king of Israel now. He's the prince now. And he has one sheep pen, which includes the lost sheep of Israel. And it includes the Gentiles. They're the other sheep. And he's made one sheep pen out of them. And he's the shepherd. Thank God. <laughs> but it's right here in Ezekiel 34. Absolutely amazing. If you want a bit more clarity on, on the whole one Israel thing, Go and read Romans chapter 9, 10, and 11. Lord, I want to thank you for the word of God, which makes us strong. Thank you, Lord, that you're our shepherd. Lord, I thank you for Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I thank you, Lord, we've been included in Christ. Now, Lord, I bless and recommend the word of God to my listeners. In Jesus' name, amen.